very good evening to all of you. Welcome to this sixth workshop under the workshop series of Jump Start 2021, organized by the Rota Club of Achievers Lanka Business School. So, Jump Start, if I give a small introduction, is a great opportunity for early stage startups as well as mature stage startups, where we have pitch clinics for early stage startups and ideators to pitch their business idea to a panelist professionals and validate their idea and also receive mentorship and win many valuable prizes for their business idea in the competition. And also we have Shark Tank for mature stage startups where you can uh, you get the chance to connect with investors and present your business to investors and um, seek investments from them. So before we move on to the workshop, this video time is dedicated for our banking partner, Bank of Bank of Salon, bearer of the nation's proud lion crest, is honored to be named Bank of the Year 2021 Sri Lanka by the globally renowned The Banker Magazine UK. We salute all Sri Lankans who have empowered our journey to victory. Um, today's workshop is on another important aspect when it comes to entrepreneurship, when it comes to um, starting your own business. Is and that is how to prepare a business plan correctly. So today's workshop will be around that, around the steps, the importance of a proper business plan and the key areas that we should focus when we prepare a business plan. So let me introduce our speaker for today. Our speaker for today is Mr. Harshadi Alvis. Mr. Harshadi Alvis, um, where he is a banker with many years of experience in the field. And he's a former um, head of remittances at Sampad Bank PLC. And now he has moved on to um, developing entrepreneurship among youngsters in Sri Lanka. So handing over the proceedings to Mr. Harshadiya. So thank you very much uh, for the introduction, uh, Madam. So uh, I welcome all the part. Uh, participants for this uh, session and I think these uh, need of the country uh, to move forward uh, to develop this country uh, that's why Rotaract has taken this topic uh, this burning issue for this our youth so as uh, Venuri uh, mentioned to you I started my career uh, in 1978, joining HSBC Colombo, then uh, worked, uh, moved to Sampath Bank from the day one of its inception, uh, worked there for 26 years, and with my retirement, uh, I went to, I joined DFCC Bank and said goodbye to banking industry in 19. 2017. Uh, currently in entrepreneurship development, working with the uh, project. So, uh, when we are talking about entrepreneurship, uh, let me give you uh, the darker side of it. In we don't have really authenticated data, but uh, available data. Uh, speak that 54 percent of startup businesses fail within the first year and only four to five percent or maximum six percent will remain after four to five years so these are very uh, uh, how do i say any entrepreneur who is going to start their business will think it twice what to do, why this is. And a lot of people see that around them, a uh, lot of failures. For that, I'd say most of the businesses, they start with a very good technical know-how, but the other things uh, made the things, I'd say, miserable or as the failures. What are these things? One is, I would say, my simple example for this is like where you seated now in a chair, there are four legs. One 
is the technical know-how. You should have the technical know-how to do anything, whether it's manufacturing services or trading, you should have the very good training knowledge, uh, technical knowledge. Then if you don't have that, the high rate of failure. Then the other thing, a lot of people are neglecting these things is entrepreneurial skills. The entrepreneurs fail because they don't have the entrepreneurial skills knowledge. This is what we are at me at my level, we are doing at the moment, developing entrepreneurial skills. Then the other thing is financial mismanagement, right? Uh, I would say not more than the mismanagement, I would say financial discipline is a more appropriate word. And the fourth, not the last, not the least, is the every entrepreneur will face problems while when they are uh, into the business. So what they will do, there are so many problems like uh, technical, marketing, costing like that, many areas. So they don't have a proper person to get advice on them. They will consult their best friend or mother or father or the brother, right? So like that, they will try to get the advice. So these call the mentoring service. So if you have all these things in place, you can be a, uh, the tendency of failure rate is low and you am sure you can get into that four to six percent of successful entrepreneurs. Now, with these four, you can't be an entrepreneur is the chair all the all four legs are strong enough and the other thing is you might think ah now the seat is chair is okay no the seat we are you are uh, using is i would say that is your commitment the commitment from the potential entrepreneur who is going to start the business should be there unconditionally Without that commitment, you can't do your business. You will come across many, many problems. So you have to face these things and uh, you had to solve all the problems and face the challenges. So this is what I'm saying about entrepreneurship. With that, now I'll, now I'll get into the topic of entrepreneurial skills. There you have this everybody says you should have a business plan what is this business plan all about it? this is before that i told you entrepreneurial skills knowledge yeah you should most of you now would like to be entrepreneurs i hope you have gone through during the previous session sorry i couldn't get the contents of that uh, to identify the market. So when you start a business, you have to do the market feasibility. You have to identify the market. What is your, my market? And market need, market assessment, and you select the product. After that, you have to see the costing part of it, proper costing, how much it will cost. And then your marketing tools, using all the marketing tools, will give you the uh, product up to some level. Then you will come, you need how to am going to do this business and where should I be. That is the business plan. For anything, you should have a proper business plan to start. So let me try to share a few slides with you. Sorry, I'm extremely sorry. Hope you could see my screen now. Yeah, we can see. Right. What is a business plan? 
business plan is a carefully prepared Quincy and Quincy's document. It has the description, analysis, valuation of the business. These are the basic things. The document loaded with facts and figures. Now, some might say, I mean, I'm not underestimating. Some people, they develop the business plan within two, one or two days. I have seen during my banking career, business plans are coming. An entrepreneur is coming for a loan facility, financial assistance with a business plan prepared by somebody else for the mere sake to get financial assistance from the bank. When we question the entrepreneur, that person doesn't know anything about the business plan because it has been developed by somebody else. You can get the assistance from another professional to do this, but you should be very thorough with your business plan. So this is why I said the document loaded with facts and figures where the entrepreneur should know all these things in his fingertips, provided critical information about the entrepreneurs, the market, the, cust the uh, customers, customers in the sense the business customers and the competitors, because these three will remain in your business because your business, it could be uh, production or services or trading because as an entrepreneur, you will get into one of these categories. Either you are into uh, production, manufacturing, or you are doing a service, IT uh, industry, it's a service, or trading, buying and selling. So if you are into production, manufacturing, then you should have a production plan. Then. If it's a service business, service oriented, then you should have an operational plan. Then when it comes to the trading, you should have a buying plan. So all these things cover the market. You have to consider the market. What is your market? Who are your customers? Not only your customers, who are my competitors? You will we'll be discussing this in our, uh, during this session. Then the product and services, what is the business plan, the product and service, the strategy. Then the financial prospects and the risk involved. Because all of us as entrepreneurs, we would like to see a profit at the end of the day. And what is your profit? You are looking at your bottom line of your financials. So, to arrive that, you should have a strategy, then the financial prospects and the risk, because you have to evaluate your risk as well. To provide the framework for a systematic and comprehensive evaluation of the business, these are the why we prepare a business plan to evaluate the business and deal with the uncertainties. The example, COVID, this pandemic situation, then evaluate the risk, how to mitigate these things and manage, help manage and control the business. So why we prepare this? Actually, not for today, business plan is for tomorrow. I told you that a lot of businesses start without having a business plan. Why prepare a business plan? One thing is to obtain finance, funding. When you request, when you approach a bank or financial institution, it ask, okay, you are going to start a business. What is your business plan? How you are, because uh, the loan, what they are going to give, they are not going to give today and recover the full amount tomorrow. It will take some time. And how you are going to do these things to serve as an action plan for the next 12 months. You can't predict more than 12 months, right? 
that is if i ask you to do predict for the next three years no it's not but to serve the road map for the next two to three years you should have a proper road map where you would like to pitch your business in three years time if it's possible if you could go up to five years well and good great to serve the business promotional tools to serve as a performance tool and ongoing basics so these then the other thing i think you agree with me what i stated before my uh, advice to you is don't start with the detail uh, don't start with the detailed plan steps so the business plan step one sorry step one concept statement description of the market need to be where you are going to uh, fill the market and somebody might say uh, why not uh, it's not only the existing market you can create a market yes definitely you could create a market and we'll discuss if time permits uh, about that as well description of the product and service the business plan should have the products and services as well what are you going to do and uh, sorry sorry right products and services description of the resources needed to create the product and services what are the resources if it's into it <coughs> development you need system engineers system designers ui ux designers lot of things even anything to do with manufacturing how to manufacture where to manufacture what is the machinery all that specifications of available resources what are the available resources what are my financials right then we'll get into the step uh, second step sorry my dear friends step 2 feasibility of the analysis position of market acceptance position of products services and feasibility investment required clear specification of all assumptions you assume things i told you these you will develop it for 12 months and for 3 years mainly you will deal i'll tell you at the end the, what is the duration and how frequent you have to look into this so you or in the business plan what you are doing is assumptions assuming my product will be made available to 100000 customers and from each customer i am going to get uh 10 rupees per month i'll be getting 1 million profit per month all these are assumptions right these things vary type to time then when you make the assumption you should have clear specifications of all assumptions detailed business plan step of developing a business plan it should be a detailed full detailed business plan you we'll start with the executive summary the executive summary will give the business about the business what is this business and uh the vacuum everything and the product and services whether you are into product you are manufacturing or services or trading then you should have vision and a mission for you organize your business in 3 years time not one year right what is your goal the vision and mission how you are going to achieve this thing that should be there 
date business began the date you are going to start this business and the most important thing is you have to look into the competition as well as long as your product is unique and you could run the business the competitors will try to copy it so until the com duplication of your product is comes forward your your product is not unique so you have to uh, same uh, i would say uh, strength you had put for marketing what you are putting for marketing should given it for competition as well by looking at your customers the competitors brief description of business facilities so i don't have to go explain each and every one but if there's a uh, need i'll tell you briefly location of the business and branches or subsidiaries strategic position income and asset summary these things should be well uh, position in your executive summary name of the founders and functions they are performed number of employees right summary of company growth including financial or market highlights summary of management future plans all these things because as a bank as we we look into these things because when you have these things only we call it proper business plan so everything is there then the market strategy detailed description of the product and services then information related to your product life cycle secret information then the other thing is competitive analysis i told you you have to look into the competitor then comes the swot analysis strength weaknesses opportunities and threats you have to address these things when you are coming doing a business plan without looking at these things Ma, what i am saying always look at the darker side of your business you address these things with positive approaches don't take it negative take it positive look at and get you develop solution for these things and develop your business plan because the bank calls so i always when i am uh, developing a product even i look at the most uh, how do i say difficult way i could develop a product for my customer i'll jot it down what are the difficulties okay go into the bank ask in the passport number account uh, identity card number and they should have a, all these things like that and the billing address like that so these are difficulties for the customer while keeping the objective and the uh, protocol of the bank i'll el- look for ways to eliminate these difficulties you put it in a triangular line with a middle line and right side all the problematic ways and the right side you will have solutions then you will come across a, you could arrive to a nice business model without uh, disturbing your customers and most convenient then the location you have to get the location where you are going to uh, host your business and your customers main customers who are your main customers your tar- customer target customer base whether it's teenagers or below 5 or middle age 
Oh, married people, you can say, define these things. You, depending on your product or service, right? Total demand for the particular product or service. Because that's why I told you at the very beginning, you had to do your market research before starting or developing the uh, business plan. You have to do the research. These are time consuming. If you do a, spend more time, you can develop a nice marketing plan. And for that, you have to do get demand for your product. Then what is the market share? What is your market share? Right? Then comes the selling price. I told you that uh, you know, you as an entrepreneur, you are trying to do a business to make a profit. So your selling price matters. So to increase your profit, you don't have to, or uh, to increase your market share, you don't have to reduce your prices. There are many ways. So that's another area that you have to, uh, discuss theory marketing strategies it's not uh, reducing your price but selling price with a uh, reasonable profit margin so it can be if i tell you uh, whether it's value driven or product -driven. that is you can sell a product with a thousand rupee ma uh, market uh, I mean profit where i still have uh, thousand, uh, 10,000 uh, sales, or you could go for another product, same product, 100 rupees with 10,000 sales or 15,000 sales. So you have to position that and you could, you have to see what, evaluate what is your market share and what is your selling price. Those are uh, different things, in a, there you have to discuss more in length. Then monthly yearly sales forecasting. I told you these are assumptions, uh, but you if you do a very good uh, in-depth marketing market research analysis, you can forecast what is your monthly and yearly sales because when it comes to yearly, there will be seasonal products. It will vary from month depending on the season. Then marketing promotional methods. What how we are going to do overall marketing strategy. Then the other thing is market under overall marketing strategies, your market penetration strategy for going a business channel of distribution strategy. These are things you will be uh, taking under marketing. Research and development. This is another area you have to do because competitors are coming behind and competitors are also uh, trying to overtake you so you should have a uh, proper r and uh, unit involved in planning so as any uh, financer they would say what is your research and development activities you are involved then the communication strategy how to reach your customers the promotions advertising public relations and personal selling these things you have to address under marketing plan then overall sales strategy sales for strategy what type of recruitment strategy you are going into how many marketing when in your marketing uh, team whether what type of professionals you are looking at how will you train them, financial and other benefits for them and the sales activities and the marketing budget. You should have a marketing budget. Budget. Uh, then you have to, uh, when you are doing the financial analysis, you have to take into account seriously the marketing budget also, how much you are going to spend and what would be the return of that. 
production relating to the operation how much the, uh, fixed capital going for the operation then the lifetime of the fixed assets repairing cost of equipments a lot of people uh, they are not giving that much of consideration for uh, depreciation because uh, fixed capital if it is machinery uh, one uh, i would say uh, to explain it further very easily a person who is having a caterpillar he will think oh power i am getting 10000 rupees so it's very nice if the caterpillar works for 10 8 hours or 10 hours he is getting 100000 so it's a very good per day right so 10000 rupees 100000 10000 per hour uh, and making 100000 per day he will calculate but he doesn't know he has ignored that after one year's time the value of the caterpillar has depreciated more than 50 percent so you have to take into this and depreciation right these things have to be addressed or if you are repairing the repairing cost how much it will cost these maintainers source so, of so, uh, then production and source of purchasing where are you going to purchase these things then the expected capacities capacity utilization plan you may have a machine that can produce 10,000 pairs per day but if your market is only to sell 2,500 then there is a idle uh, period your production is the machine could uh, produce more but your sales are less your market is not that so you don't need a, such a big machine or you have to expand your marketing uh, tools to see expand your mark uh, sales then production operation plan production and operation plan you have to draw up the factory layout in the location so if I, so if there are a lot of imports and export, then you have to look into how you are going to, uh, when you are importing your raw materials, uh, the transport cost, and again, re-export, like those things. That's why I said factory location when you are going, right? Then the raw material requirement plan. All these things, direct cost of raw materials have to be addressed. Then the availability of raw materials. You may have a very good product. Uh, now, if I tell you a product that I know, there is a high demand for Sri Lankan uh, pineapples. In uh, Europe, we can't meet the demand because there is no production. That much of proper uh, pineapple production in the country right like that then the direct labor requirement plan then indirect labor direct and indirect labor. then labor cost also will come under production and operational plan these are uh, i don't have to explain this uh, more because you know how the labor cost is and the availability and labor productivity today uh overhead cost and production can come to the variable cost per unit now you have all these things you will arrive what is the variable cost per unit total cost per unit this is the costing we have done the sales uh, uh, figures marked with the marketing now we have to know what is the cost so from that we can arrive the uh, profit then the organization and management plan we have to discuss about the nature of the business legal status of the business 
what is the legal state whether it's sole proprietor partnership limited liability or it's a public company what is what sort of company you are going to start right then the ownership information percentage of ownership and the involvement of the company who are the owners how what is their ownership like do they have unlimited or is it we'll say a person uh, will take a, an example like this there is a highly technical person get involved and uh, funding will be by another investor with the 10 person shareholding for the uh, technical guy who knows a to z of the business there is a risk for 10 percent if he vanishes tomorrow with another there is a person key person you had to look into the share his commitment and the, because a lot of people they start the business and the person who is behind the uh, business uh, may not be there he may be a good friend today but you there is no assurance he will be the same for tomorrow so unless there is a, a commitment from him and he's been rewarded uh, your business is at the stake so uh, as a bank in a business as a financer or to do a proper business plan these things have to be addressed then the organization and management plan you will have the ma management profile key people i mentioned to you right the profile of them what are their ex I mean, their expertise in which area name position primary responsibilities education background unique experience and skills prior employment so there could be i'm not underestimating with a lot of good educational background but uh fact they are not the best people because when you are starting your business uh you can't you have to take a calculated risk but you can't take uh risk at all ways you are as an entrepreneur you have to take risk but it should be calculated risk Right, so your management should know, uh, should have the experience in uh, with the technical and financial management. Uh, all those things, uh, it's better to have with your management. Then the other thing is special skills. So some management team they may be have, they may be with very special skills. A unique skills right in the uh, track records and the industry recognition also matters because when you are going to uh, uh, sales and when you are negotiating with uh, others not only sales even the purchasing because when you are doing purchasing uh, it's uh, these are not just possible credit facilities to uh, balance your cash flow, strengthen your cash flow, and to so uh, and the other side when you sell also you had tried to do it on cash so that you should have the quality product. So industry recognition matters. The people will say okay they need 90 days credit that person is very very honorable person no problem give it on nine even 120 days then that is the industry recognition of the management and from the when you are going for the sales they might say right don't worry the so and so is behind this and you don't have to be worried about the product it should be a quality product i'll tell now if you go to 
uh, one of the top restaurants by Ministry of Health. Uh, Darshan Munidas is there. They will say, oh, you don't have to be worried. The product is very good, authentic, and value for money, right? So like that, the industry recognition is there with the management, community involvement, how the community will get involved with the this and number of years of the company that also matters uh, when you are uh, with the organization. Then the organization manage under that board of directors and qualification positions on the board extend and involvement with company how much they are getting involved with the company are they just silent partners and the background historical and future contribution what are their plans how the, how much they are going to okay you may have a very good business plan where you need mission and investments how we are going to do that investment we'll say another five years time you your business plan will have we are going to expand with another 10 machines. Each machine will cost uh, uh, 15 million. So you need 150 million. Okay, you may have the business plan. How you are going to fund that 150 million? Is it from profit? Then what is your cash flow projections? Right? That's the company success. Then you have to do a short analysis. I told you at the very beginning. Then the, in the business plan, there should be a short analysis and before start the operation, pre-operational activities, what are you going to do? Then the fixed assets relating to the administration matters and your action plan. Then the other thing is all of us, we have, we have a, another response, that's the social responsibility towards our society how much we are into this you can't do businesses uh, any uh, product or service or trading without social responsibility you have to address this and you have to show that your business is with uh, business ethics and responsibilities then the company policies now there are i know i I told you at the very beginning with my experience, I work at Sampath Bank. Uh, in that memorandum and articles, it says Sampath Bank won't fund for alcoholic products and slaughter, annual slaughter. Right? So that is the company policy for some reason. It's there. Like that company policies. So that is only an example I gave you, but uh, you may have different company policies in uh, with uh, going in hand in hand with social responsibilities and ethics. Then the community activities, how you are going to do it. Uh, then under financials, you had to do the manufacturing count. You should have proper trading and uh, profit and loss account. Cash flow is very important. We are looking into the cash flows and the balance sheet and some ratio analysis uh, to identify uh, the how the business will run without because uh, especially when you go to a bank, they will look into it because they are not the banks doesn't have money they are lending borrow depositors money to you so they have a responsibility towards the borrow, uh, depositors that's why they look into the all these things uh, in depth so through the ratio analysis they can see what are how the business is going to be what is the break even i don't have to explain these things uh, at uh, most of you, majority of you could uh, teach me on these things, break-even analysis, you'll see uh, when what is the break-even period and gross profit to GP ratio and the NP ratio. I don't have to explain these things, I just put these things. Then the return on investment, 
because you don't have to invest today and wait for 15, 20 years to get your capital investment return and the payback period also that. So these are things that uh, you would like, we as a bank, uh, we would like to see because if you cover all these things, you are somewhat there in the business and you have a good understanding about the business and you have identified the pluses and minuses uh, to start your business and to face any challenges, all that, because these things have been addressed. So, uh, 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 this is what I have to say about it. So I'll keep the balance time period to answer any questions. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Harsha, for your um, knowledge that you shared when it comes to <clears throat> preparing a business plan and what key areas we should look for um, when it comes to a business plan and all of that. So we have a small task before we ha have to move on to the question and answer session. So when it comes to the question and answer session, I'll uh, mention this beforehand. You can either unmute yourself and ask your question from Mr. Harsha, or you can direct your question to Mr. Harsha through the chat box. And before uh, we move on to the question and answer session, um, here's a small video from our banking partner, Bank of Fear. Now all my bill payments are right at my fingertips. I'm in touch with my BOC card whenever, wherever. BOC Smart Online Banking creates time for the important things in life while your banking is done securely with ease and speed, wherever you may be. All right, with that, we come to the Q&A session of Workshop 6. If you have any questions, like I mentioned before, you can unmute yourself and ask from Mr. Harsha Diyarvis, or you can uh, put your question in the chat box. Any question that you have, you can clarify all your doubts right now. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, just uh, just I have one question with regarding to business plan preparations and all of that. Uh, when preparing a business plan, so we have a certain expectation of our profit figures or we forecast it, right? So when having those uh, forecast figures, uh, is it, would you say it's good to be prudent? or And if being prudent, because we say we shouldn't overestimate our profits or underestimate our losses, right? So we should have a marginal amount. Uh, so when we are considering that, will that be a conflict of interest when we are trying to raise finances? So obviously we are presenting this plan to potential investors and these investors just take a look at our financial projections and say, okay, this is not a lucrative investment for me. Should I be dumping my money for this and uh, looking at the profit figures? So what can you say in uh, contrast to that? Uh, when you are presenting uh... Uh, for an investor or to a bank. Uh, when you are doing a business, I would say the main thing is you have to be genuine. So uh, you shouldn't overestimate, as you said, I'm not saying you are doing, but as a question you raised it, it's a very good thing. But a prudent, experienced financer will know looking at uh, your uh, business plan whether it's a feasible thing to invest or not. So you have to take the real situation, market, uh, uh, what is your market, market uh, segment, and how much uh, of sales you can do, and what is your uh, production cost and your marginal cost. Then if you're going for finances, what would be the financial cost, reducing that the net profit, because any investor would say, uh, would like to say that he or she, the investor is getting more than the bank deposit rates and much more with a bigger profit. So as in answering your question, you have to be realistic and to be honest with the proper these things. And if it's a negative uh, picture, then you had to look into it where you can could improve the uh, your profit. 
either increasing your sales or reducing your cost there are many ways to improve your profits that matters or when you are doing a business where it matters your profits uh, that is what we are everybody is interested about giving a proper product so uh, sometimes you may have to bring new technology into it and that may be expensive yet you have to do the justification my dear and give a proper uh, report and as finances okay as investors i know as a bank uh, we are very much happy to see uh, if the business proposal is with less questions because uh, we have to raise everything is there even the darker side and if you have a darker side negative side better you address that uh, negative side with a solution is it clear my dear yeah have i answered yes. yeah yes i mean you can have negative effects but in your business proposal you highlight the negative with a solution that's the main thing you address all your negatives thank you for that question um any more questions uh, that you all need um answered from mr harsha you can this is your time um mr harsha let me ask you a question like this when it comes to times that we are in right now when it comes to covid related yeah. situation so is there anything uh, especially that a person uh, who is about to start a business and when it comes to preparing a business plan anything that a person should especially uh, pay attention to uh, with relation to covid-19 and the times that we are in right now uh thank you venuri uh, that is this is a situation that has come into this world after 1921 right so these are things these are good lessons we never thought of covid pandemic situation during uh, the recent past right uh, 1921 uh, french flu was there after that uh, it went to history right so these are good lessons when we are do- launching a product also to address as i uh, answered uh, Uh, sorry i forget the uh, that uh, uh, person's name we have to address these things and come with the solution so uh, from the other hand i won't deny or uh, accept uh, thing saying during covid period you can't start a business i think this is the best time to start a business because it's at the rock bottom you are purchasing shares at the from the share market when it's at the rock bottom then only you can make profits likewise the market is next to zero so what you are not going to stay like this forever you start to you learn lessons from the others i mean it says you have to learn through to experience i would say the best thing is you had learn through the others experience then you won't get into trouble you know what has happened to the other person and you will when you are doing a uh, launching a product you will do it addressing those issues as well so covid we can take it as a learning point uh, learning point uh, venuri and for these participants i would say i'll give a website for you all to run through uh, a entrepreneurship comprehensive curricula uli.lk why you you lead.lk that is the uh, www.uli.lk that is the website you could go to the entrepreneurship documents and uh, you can get the uh, uh, resource i mean there are resource books trainer guides and the training workbooks so you can in all three languages it's available uh, and these are newly developed uh, very 
uh, comprehensive training material and you could see uh, you could learn how what are the things that you have to uh, learn and all these things have to be done even the market researches everything is there so uh, if anybody would like to uh, know about entrepreneurship better visit uh, uli.plk and uh, refer this book there are four books one two three four in all three languages you can yes Henry. Thank you, Mr. Harsha. And also, this is more of like a general question, not exactly related to business plan. Uh, but do you need experience in corporate before you go on to um, a business of your own? Ah, ask me whether you need experience. If you have like experience, will it, experience. yeah. Uh, is it corporate? You are referring to corporate? business yes. or in general business um in corporate corporate says uh, it's in blue chip companies that's what you are referring um, when it yeah, comes to experience like this penury uh, i raised a question from professor uh, carl fonseca some time back because uh, i'll tell a small story about experience this is the good example uh, one of my aunts had a chest pain and went to a doctor. I am not going to mention the doctor's name. And he ordered many reports, right? After about three weeks, uh, he said, uh, this happened about 10, 15 years back. Uh, Madam, uh, you are with the, you had to go for open heart surgery. There are three blocks. My mother took my aunt to her doctor, Dr. Walpulli, and uh, for a second opinion, he just kept his stethoscope and uh, requested the ECG uh, technician to calm down with the machine. She didn't, uh, he didn't allow my aunt to go to the upstairs to get the ECG report, to get the ECG then and there. And he went through the ECT with the telescope. He said, "Is always your sister is having three blocks that the first doctor took three weeks, like with a whole heap of reports. But Dr. Walpole, just keeping his telescope, looking at the ECT, he said three blocks. Uh, Professor Carl von Steke is a family friend of us. When he visited, I asked him, Uncle, this is what happened. That doctor took so many reports and this doctor just keeping he said dr walpule is a very one of the most experienced doctors cardiologist right it's like this when a doctor pass out from the medical college for one sickness he will give 10 tablets after 10 years for 10 sicknesses he will give only one tablet that's called the experience so to your question, uh, experience count a lot, man. And in corporate uh, world, when they are hiring, they will look into, uh, they will look for experienced people. Even a balance sheet, when we are looking, I started as a count, uh, uh, counter clerk, right? So it takes, it took many years for me to understand what is a balance sheet and what are the implications, those sort of things. So experience is a thing that uh, no one could contest. Yeah, I wanted to ask because uh, so many youngsters these days are very much into entrepreneurship, so they may not have um, very much experience in corporate before they go into corporate. So sometimes there are uh, like um, students who are out of university who straight away um, look into starting their own business. So going to instances yeah. like that. Yeah. Yes, Venery. Everything starts from zero. Rocket is going to the, the now they are trying to, for the mass event. It starts with zero. 
right? Going to the moon, it starts at zero and going up to 1,200 kilometers per hour speed. So likewise, all these young entrepreneurs start with zero with a lot of issues, problems. That's why I said uh, you will have enormous problems when you start. And that's why I gave that example with the chair, uh, the stand. So they have to face these challenges and everybody. Uh, so all these businessmen, top class businessmen today, you'd see they have started with zero. So don't be afraid. Take the lead and go ahead. Yes, Gian, you had raised your hand. Yeah, uh, if you are done with that question, I just have one more question to ask. Uh, are you done with that question? Answer. Yes, Gian. Yes, Gian. Ah, yeah, cool. So what I wanted to address is, uh, now before I just asked a question about being transparent of your business, right? Yes. Gian. About the financials. Yeah. And uh, rather than uh, window dressing any of the accounts or anything like that, it's best to always be transparent when you're dealing with the outside third parties. Yes. Uh, but uh, say, like you said, and you also mentioned that during this time, you know, pre-pandemic uh, or post-pandemic is the best time to actually start a business because like you mentioned, everything is starting from rock bottom and you just have to scale your way up. So, you know, you're starting from zero and you can always climb up from there onwards, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to know that uh, in the future, there will obviously be some kind of thing that will happen. So looking at the current situation with the Forex crisis and uh, even the time value of money and inflation hitting double digits, what can we do to like, you know, mitigate this? I mean, having the contingency, if you're starting a business, obviously uh, it's going to be like a business entity concept. You will have to treat the business as a separate you know, entity. Right. So when you're considering something like that, how much uh, liquidity should you have saved up? Like what's the how um, like should you have seven months worth of liquidity or 12 months worth of liquidity? So you don't have to deteriorate your current lifestyle because normally what generally what I have seen, what people do is they take their salary and just dump it into the business or the business profits that keep it uh, to sustain their current lifestyle. How much, you know, backup contingency, like fund should you have? Like, is there an exposure percentage for that? Yeah. Uh, let me take one by one. One thing is you address the uh, current uh, Forex crisis, uh, uh, Gayan. Personally, I would say Forex rates has gone up, not because of anything, because we are depending on imported items. Right. So as individuals, we can do one thing as much as possible to avoid foreign uh, imported stuff. There are items that you have to buy, like medicine and your fuel. Those, there are things, but there are many more things, fruits. I mean, we can definitely, I mean, $400 million going for fruit imports. Right. Likewise, there are so many things we can contribute, I mean, individually, right? This personal, uh, I would say a request. And in the foreign market, forex market in, uh, in, the, in a bigger picture, every day we can't go on like this. There'll be more uh, trade uh, restrictions. And I know we had a very crisis situation to, uh, because uh, $4 billion coming in from tourism sector, Lesha. it's not there. Uh, but now there are a lot of uh, tourist inquiries coming in. And I know today I tried to book a hotel for a training program. They have uh, increased their uh, prices from 1st January, all the hotels. And to tell you, in Colombo for a function of hours, all the hotels are booked in Colombo other than touch uh, North Lounge, right? Uh, that is the situation. So tourism, tourists are coming uh, with this good thing, sign is that uh, the vaccination, uh, this is nothing to do with politics, just the reality. And the other thing is, as individuals, a lot of migrant workers 
because they are not sending their money to the country now. I don't know. There are many reasons for it. They anticipate that the dollar rupee will devalue further. Uh, that may be a, another reason. Or the uh, informal money changes are paying more than the bank rates. So we are talking about uh, the dollar infl uh, the inflation, dollar uh, appreciation without sending their money to Sri Lanka on the normal channel. So individually we have, we can do a lot. So this situation won't be there forever, uh, my dear, it will. Then coming to the second point, uh, how much liquidity? It depends on your business, type of business, what is your cash flow, that's what. And when you are uh, putting your I mean, so investing all the full salary or withdrawing money for your lifestyle. I'd say this is my simple answer to all the, especially to micro SMEs or SMEs. If you have invested money in a business, you withdraw money as a salary for you. Think you have to run a business for a certain period with a bit of difficulties, you have to think, if you are employing somebody, if you are employing Harshad Yalvis for this job, how much you will pay for this guy? I'm going to pay 100,000. So I'm going to be there. So we do only 100,000. And the balance amount, it not belongs to you, it belongs to the uh, industry, to your business, reinvest increase your profits a lot of people what they do is that's what i told you at the very big financial management withdraw the money uh, thinking this is your salary if you are going to employ somebody to do the same job what is the amount you will pay as that employee's salary you take that salary and sandwich your behavior your lifestyle and reinvest will be a successor. Did I answer your question, Barnaka? All right. Yeah, yeah, clear. Thank you. I just have a like one more thing to ask, just from what you said, uh, John Tekla. Uh, just as you mentioned at the forex crisis and all of that, uh, so I I have noticed that most what seems to be happening is a majority of the currency swaps here and there. So do you really think that's a sustainable way to reduce the depreciation or what? No, I, this is my personal view. I think it's only a, a patchwork. For a short period, you can go with currency swap. Not so in the long, long term, that will actually No, you can't do all... it for, may, I mean, you can't repeat SOPs yeah, yeah. because the SOP cost will be very high. Unless you have a, a repayment plan. Now, I told you that the tourists are coming back. So that is one good thing. Likewise, if he increases our exports and reduce your imports, then the balance of payment uh, we can get into some sort uh, of... That's highly good. unlikely, right? Because I think we've been in a budget deficit for the longest time. Yes, that's right. So there should be a clear plan. Mm -hmm. My thinking is uh, because of COVID, we, have, we are facing a lot of uh, And even issues. the debt moratorium has been increasing. So how yes. can you like mitigate that for in, your, in terms of business plan? Uh, Developing a business plan, uh, Banaka, you have to take, I mean, you if you are doing a business and if Venuri is doing a business, both are doing the same product, your business plan is unique to your business. You can't, uh, you can take an example and take some thing out from another business plan, but if both of you all are going to manufacture, we'll say ballpoint pens, the business plans are unique. So uh, there could be a lot of things get involved into that. 
that's why i told you for you all to refer those uh, um, take you how to start a business and do your uh, cash flows it's depend a lot of things will come into place uh, regarding when you are doing the business plan your production uh, volume and the sales volume and the production cost all that will be there then how much you need when you are extending further if you have to give it on credit uh, selling your credit term right so how much of uh, cash working capital you require so when you remind do it on only cash sales you might say 45 days credit so you need more working capital for your operation so uh, there is no such rule this much of money should be there for your uh, operation thank you very much for asking these questions my dear manuka very i think there are much of questions in um yeah we can give another minute or two um if there are any questions from the audience if not we can wrap up yeah. for today so uh i would say i mentioned to you that mentoring service is a thing that will help uh, to develop entrepreneurs so uh, january a uh, free mentoring service there again that same people uh, website uli.lk if any one of you need any assistance there is a free uh, mentoring service uh, and uh, this is not marketing but sasnaka sansad uh, is uh, doing the operational part of it you could uh, get involved with them and uh, get the free mentoring service so a lot of people start up businesses they need this how to do a business plan how to do the cash flow assessment how to could you improve your profit like that and marketing everything so please please be in touch with sasnaka uh, we'll have this uh, mentoring platform free of charge Uh, all right uh, i think mr harsha we can wrap up for today uh, okay thank you very much minuri okay. and thank you uh, everybody who participated in this meeting thank you with that we end up uh, we are going to end today's session workshop 6 on um, how to prepare a business plan which is under the workshop series of jumpstart 2021 by the road track club of achievers stuff of business school so before we end there are a few announcements that i have to make so the seventh and the final workshop of the workshop series and the jumpstart will be held um day after tomorrow that is on the 30th december 2021 and this is called pitch perfect so this is the final step for you potential entrepreneurs so for you potential ideators you have to go through so this workshop will um teach you how to pitch your business idea to a panel and remember that this um workshop will be uh, helpful for you a lot if you are a part of pitch it minute if you have registered for pitch it minute this is the final workshop will be very much essential for you as uh, you will be taught how to pitch a business idea as and as for today i would like to take a moment and thank mr uh, harshadi arvis for joining with us uh, for making his time for us among his busy schedules to educate us on how to prepare a proper business plan and also a special shout out goes out to our knowledge partner Sasana Sanskrit Foundation for connecting us with valuable resource personnel like uh, Mr. Harsha and all the other speakers that we came across during this workshop series. So uh, register for the final workshop series as well. If you are already registered for the workshop series, you will receive notifications via email and WhatsApp. And also, kind reminder. um to uh, register if you are potential ideator if you are early stage startup owner you can always um register for pitch it win it and that will be a really great opportunity for you 
to validate your idea, to receive mentorship and a lot of other, and to um, receive a lot of other opportunities. And also I would like to uh, remind that all the tech startups registered under, under Pitch, Pitch It Winnie, uh, will be directed to, if you are a finalist, you will be directed to a special program called 10,000 Ideas. It's done by ICTA, where they aid uh, tech start, future tech startups where they offer mentorship and a lot of other opportunities. So if you are a tech enthusiast and also a tech startup um, owner, so this is a really good chance for you to register to Pitch It Win It and uh, get uh, those benefits, the maximum the benefit out of them. And also to receive more, uh, to get to know about more information on Jumpstart 2021, you may visit our blog page of road traffic achievers. All the links are given in the chat box. So with that, we are going to end today's workshop session. So once again, Mr. Harshadiya, thank you for joining with us. And to all the participants, thank you for joining. We hope this session was insightful for you and this uh, session was useful. Um, so until we meet again on the 30th, stay safe, good night.